The other overuse injury that needs different management is shin splints, okay? Shin splints, so this is the pain that a lot of runners get, particularly the, those heavier guys amongst us, okay? Pain on the inside of the shin, about two-thirds of the way down the inside of the leg, okay? That shin splints, and that's kind of self-limiting. What's not self-limiting is a stress fracture, which is the extreme version of shin splints, okay? Um, it's a bony injury. It's a, it's a reaction that the bone has to having too much load placed on it, okay? So it's another overuse, too much running type injury, all right? The big thing with shin splints, if it's starting to limit your running, you need to get an accurate diagnosis, okay? The two things that I use to make a diagnosis between either shin splints or a stress fracture, a tibial stress fracture, if you get pain when you run, that's not surprising for shin splints. That's kind of one of the defining features of shin splints. If the pain gets better as you warm up, it's probably a good sign, okay, shin splints. If that pain gets worse as you continue to run, the chances of you getting closer to a stress fracture are much greater, all right? The only way to find out for sure, though, is by getting a bone scan, all right? So they're the pieces of information which I would take great value from. Okay, the big thing for bone injuries is rest, whether you like it or not, and most people don't, and that's the big battle we have, is getting people off their feet, okay? Shin splints, you might be off your feet for a couple of weeks, okay, or not running for a couple of weeks. Stress fractures, you're looking at closer to 12 weeks. It's a big, big deal, all right? Again, rehab, there's two, you know, pervading kind of issues here, getting strong, and loading appropriately and consistently, all right? And so here's just, uh, for any of you that are familiar with training peaks, this is kind of what you're trying to see. When you start off, you just want to see this linear progression going upwards. You don't want to see it jumping up and down like that, okay? Shin splints, massage, painkillers, taping, acupuncture, ultrasound, I couldn't really think of any other ones. Again, I don't see that they've got a great deal of value in managing this problem, okay? Despite what a lot of people may say, there's, there's no evidence to support their use. Okay, so in summary, if you get one of these injuries, I think there's always value in getting it checked. Sometimes there's some nasty things that can get missed, even if you've had it before, even if you know what it is. I think getting that expert opinion is really important, okay? Often you need a short period of rest to help that healing process. If you're gonna rest, do it straight away and do it thoroughly under the supervision of your physio and your coach, all right? You need to have close communication with your coach and your physio, and those lines of communication need to be really well open. Then everyone can coordinate your run into your event or the rest of your season or whatever the case may be to maximize your chances of success, okay? My facetious comment there about don't using magnets is kind of my little gag. There's, you know, we all get anxious, we all get on the internet, and we all go searching for that panacea, which sadly doesn't often exist. But if you see mumbo jumbo with adverts that it's too good to be true, it, it probably is, okay? Um, and the other thing is back your training. If you're satisfied that you've, been, that you've got the work done, um, you can afford some recovery period, it's not ideal. But you've got to remember that as triathletes, when you, particularly when you, the longer you've been training for, that bank of reserves that you've got is going to stand you in good stead and you'll, you'll surprise yourself.